Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. You've heard people say that someone's very understanding. What do they mean by the word understand? I'm sure that true understanding is more than a sympathetic attitude or a tolerant feeling for the situation at hand. To really understand, a person must be able to project himself into the feelings, the heartache, the anxiety, the depression, or the joy of the person going through the experience at hand. Is it possible to do this? Can we know what another person's feeling is and experience that same feeling ourselves? Now, I'm not talking about a mental approach, but a heartfelt understanding. To give you a better idea of what I mean, suppose we get started with the story, The Man Who Understood. <laughs> the shouting and laughter of children coming home from school is most enjoyable. Even though mother and dad pay taxes to hire teachers to pour education into the playfield heads. The doors of learning have opened and closed for the last time on this day as Steve McLean and his pals walk home from school. Let's push the clock along a little and find Steve banging the kitchen screen door with the resounding bang of a firecracker. Steve, what did I tell you about doors? I know, Mom. We don't live in a barn, and the only time we can make exploding noises is on the 4th of July. But I keep forgetting. Uh-huh. But I do forget, Mom. You're not telling me anything, young man. Well, how was school today? Oh, it was okay. You know how school is. Hey, what's under the cake cover? Never mind, Nosy. Chocolate cake. Oh, boy. Hey, can I have some, Mama? Uh, will chocolate cake help your memory? Sure. It's the best thing in the world. <laughs> All right, Pollywog. Oh, and there's milk in the refrigerator. Boy, you're the best mom I ever had. Hey, leave the painted flowers on the dish. Boy, that's the best chocolate cake ever, Mom. Mm, it sure was good. There'll be more for supper. Oh, Steve. Hey, that's Robbie. Can I go out and play? Mm, okay, until it gets dark. And you come in without me calling you. Oh, Steve. Okay, Mother. I'm coming, Rob. Ah, <laughs> uh, chocolate cake really improves the memory, all right. <laughs> oh, well, boys are boys. Oh, land's sakes, I hope that car didn't hit a child. Better see. Mr. McLean, Mrs. McLean. Yes, Robbie, what is it? Steve's been hit by a car. Move him, Jane. You'll do more harm than good. All right, Pat. Oh, he must be awfully badly hurt. He hasn't moved at all. There, there, now. Take it easy. We'll get him to the hospital. Then we'll know more about it. Mrs. McLean, I'm terribly sorry I hit your son. I'd give anything to trade places with him. Please believe me. I believe you, Mr. Morgan. I wasn't speeding. I was going slowly because I saw the children playing. And suddenly your son was right in front of the car. I'm sorry. Terribly sorry. Take it easy, Wesley, my boy. I'll have you driven home in a squad car. Thanks, Pat. I'm too upset to drive myself. All right, folks. Move back. Let the ambulance through. Move back now. Take it easy now, boys. He's just a wee fella, and he's in bad shape. Pat, may I go along with you oh, in the you ambulance? you certainly can. Sit in front alongside the driver. 
The doc will sit with Steve so he can watch him and help if he needs it on the way. In you go now. Pat. Wesley, I thought the boys had taken you home. I... I'd rather be taken to the hospital, if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. We'll drop you off on the way back to the station. Thank you. I've got to see this through, regardless of the result. I get phone. Ranger headquarters, Grey Wolf speaking. This is O'Rourke. Is Bill there? Uh, hold line for a minute. He'll be here plenty soon. Bill, this for you. I'll be right there. Uh, Pat O'Rourke on phone. Thanks, Grey Wolf. Hello, Pat. The same to you, me boy. Say I've got bad news for Angus. Oh? His boy's been hit by a car. Oh, no. Is he badly hurt? I'm afraid so. You better have Angus come to the hospital as soon as you can get him there. Right. I'll have him brought in by helicopter. And I'll meet him at the copter port with my car. Goodbye. What's up? Angus's son has been hit by a car. Oh, no. What? Grey Wolf, call the copter port. Have them go out and pick up Angus. He and his crew are out near Sawback Ridge. I'll radio the crew and have them make a marker for the pilot. Uh, I do right now. Henry, bring the car around front. We'll leave for the copter base as soon as I get through radioing. Right away. Yeah, what do you want me to do, sonny? Get over to the hospital, Stumpy, and do what you can to help and comfort Jane until we can get there. Helicopters sure are wonderful. It would have taken Angus two days to get here any other way. Well, what's wrong, Bill? Why the big rush? Get in the car, Angus. I'll tell you on the way. Shall I use the siren? Yes. Bill, what's going on? Your son's been in an accident. Steve's hurt? Yes. He's in the hospital. Jane's with him. How, how bad is he? I don't know, Angus. He was hit by a car. Hit by a car? Oh, no. Take it easy. Remember, you're a ranger. Getting excited isn't going to help. Not even when your loved ones are in trouble. Okay, okay. Let's get to the hospital as fast as we can. Right. We don't want another accident. Here's the room. Angus, you're too late. He's gone. Steve's dead. Oh, Angus, our boy's dead. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, do- Doctor, it- is it true? Yes, Mr. McLean. It's true. <laughs> I'm-, I'm sorry. We did all we could, but it wasn't enough. Oh, Steve, Steve. I'm, I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. McLean. I have a, enough words to tell you how sorry I am. Who are you? I'm the driver that hit your son. I wish you I did could... it. You killed Steve. Angus, please control yourself. It was an accident, Pat. I'll tell you that. You did it. You killed Angus, him. Angus, please. Can't you see the man suffering enough as it is? You killed my boy. You killed him, and now I'm going to kill you. Do you hear? A life for a life. Angus, control yourself. Let me go. I'll show him he can't run children down and then just be sorry for it. How do you like that? Kill my son, will you? Angus, control yourself, or I'll help you too. I'm sorry, Mr. Morgan. Shock was too much for Angus. That's, that's all right. 
I understand. Understand? How can you understand how it feels to come home and find your son dead, murdered? You'd better leave, Mr. Morgan. Yes. He won't get away with this, you murderer. <laughs> about the roughest funeral I ever want to attend. Yep. You can say that again, Sonny. It ain't easy for a young couple to have a child taken from them in death. It ain't easy to lose any loved one in death. This time, it's especially hard. Uh, Jane hold up better than Angus. He take it plenty hard. Yes, Jane's a Christian. I'm afraid Angus isn't. Steve was the apple of his eye. Now, that apple's been picked. Poor Wesley's feeling awfully bad about this, too. I say, you think that Steve was his own son. I wonder what's going to happen at the inquest tomorrow. I hope it'll be a quiet one. Testimonies of the principals involved in the death of Steve McLean. <coughs> I have personally investigated the facts, and I find Steve McLean's death resulted from accidental means. <laughs> this inquest is concluded, and the record's closed on the accidental death of Steve McLean. What do you mean, closed? Are you going to let that murderer get away with this? Mr. McLean! As coroner, I'm satisfied that your son's death was an accident. Since these are the findings, I can't recommend that Wesley Morgan be held for trial by jury. If I weren't convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that Mr. Morgan's innocent of any deliberate intent or recklessness, I wouldn't hand down this finding. I think Mr. Morgan's anguish will be with him a long time even though this was an accident. What does he know about losing a son? How can he understand how I feel? If you don't bring justice, then I will. Let's get him out of here, fellas. Okay, Bill. Mr. McLean, please restrain yourself. I'll get justice. I'll make my own revenge. That man can't kill my son and get away with it. He'll pay. You wait and see. He'll pay. Mr. Morgan. Yes, Mrs. McLean. I'm so sorry the way Angus is acting towards you. Please believe me when I say that I don't blame you. Thank you for those kind words. Angus doesn't mean as he's threatening. He's so terribly grieved and so terribly hurt now. He'll feel differently in time. Please forgive him the way he's acting. Well, there's nothing to forgive. I understand how he feels. I understand. Angus, why don't you go outside and get some air? Why? There's nothing to breathe for. Oh, Angus, you can't go on brooding like this. It won't bring Steve back. That's right. No man should be allowed to take a child's life and not give his own in return. If the state won't give justice, then I will. Who gave you authority to be a judge? I did. Wesley Morgan killed my son, and I'm going to fix him. Bill, please come over and talk to Angus. He's still threatening to kill Mr. Morgan. I'll come over right away, Jane. Don't worry. Angus doesn't mean it. Angus, I understand in a small degree how you feel, but you can't go on this way. How can you understand, Bill? How can you know the anguish and loneliness I'm going through? Well, I can't, really. 
All I can do is mentally project myself into your situation. This guy Morgan keeps saying he understands. How can he or anybody know how I feel? Well, he's going to pay for this just as sure as I'm a foot high. Angus, why don't you grow up and become a man and bear your grief like one? Do you think you could do better? Not on my own strength, no. Times like this, a man needs more than his own ability to rely on. What does that mean? Who's going to give me more strength? The Lord will, if you give him a chance. Oh, never mind the Sunday school stuff. I can't stomach it under normal conditions, and much less now. You're going to hear what I have to say, whether you like it or not. Are you talking as my boss now? No, as your friend. Well, then get out of my house, friend. I don't need sermons now. Sermons... Didn't bring Steve back. Angus, you're a coward. I'll punch you right in the nose for that. I don't think so, because you know it's the truth. You're taking this tragedy like a man who hasn't any hope. If you were a Christian, you'd have the hope of the believer. You'd know that someday you will see Steve again. Jane's deeply grieved, too, but she has the Lord's promise that she'll be with Steve in heaven someday. That promise gives her strength. It's a strong staff to lean on during crisis time. Ah, oh, maybe that's all right for women and children, but not for men. Anytime you think I'm not a man, I'd be willing to prove it any way you'd like. Any challenge you can throw at me. <laughs> Angus, in the New Testament it says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Those are promises of God. What greater comfort and hope can you ask for? Ah, sermons. Well, I'll handle this my own way. And I don't need God's help or anybody else's. I well, have it your own way. I'll expect you back on the job in the morning. You're heartless. How can you expect me to work? The regulations say that you're allowed four days off with pay in case of death in the immediate family. You've got too much time to think. You need to work and work hard. So you're too tired and too busy to think thoughts you haven't any right to think. Is that so? Yes. Since you've apparently lost your common sense temporarily and your ability to think straight, you'd better do something about it. The answer is work, and plenty of it. What if I decide not to show up? In that case, you'll be fired. I'll see you in my office in the morning at the usual starting time. That's an order as your boss. <laughs> is half an hour late, young fella. Uh, what are you going to do about it? I ought to do what regulations say. Fire him. You aren't really going to, are you? No, pal. I made the threats with the hope that they'd snap Angus out of his morose condition. I'm afraid it didn't work. Uh, too bad Angus not Christian. Yep. Sure is. The Lord sure can give a fella a wonderful amount of help when the going's rough. Yes, sir, he sure can. Hello? Uh, Jane, is Angus on his way to work? Well, he said he was going to work when he left the house. Isn't he there? No, not yet. Well, he left an hour ago. Where do you think he's gone? I have an idea. I'll call you as soon as I can find him. Goodbye. You don't think he's heading for Wesley's ranch? Yes, I do. Let's go. I hope we get to the Morgan Ranch before Angus does. We will, young fella. He can't walk this far that fast. Maybe he'd take car. I don't think so. Jane would have mentioned it. Angus walks to headquarters in the morning when he's home and not out in the forest. He better keep sharp eye out. He might try to hide when he hear a car. Ah, you have a point there, Greywolf. Huh. 
Maybe we're barking up the wrong tree. We don't know for sure that he's out this way at all. Hey, there he is, walking down the road. Uh, oh, good. We got here just in time. I'll say we did. He's got his service revolver on his belt. I've got a full and busy day outlined for Angus McLean. He won't have time to brew, and he'll be too tired to think when he gets home at night. How are things, Wesley? Oh, just fair. I'm beginning to sleep most of the night now. That's fine. I'm glad to hear it. How are the McLeans? Oh, Jane's all right. She's a Christian. The Lord gives her help to control her grief. Time will help her. I still don't know about Angus, though. What do you mean? I found him walking out here the other day. I'm afraid he still has it in his mind to harm you. Do you really believe he'd do that? If talk means anything, yes. That's why I'm here. I don't understand. I'm leaving a couple of my men here to protect you until Angus is able to get control of himself again. I don't think that'll be necessary, Bill. After I'm all, I'd sure he's... appreciate it if you'd cooperate. Otherwise, I may have to ask the authorities to watch him when he's not working. For the good of both of you. This is only a temporary precaution, you know. All right. You can put the men here to bodyguard me if you wish. Thanks. I'll feel much better about your safety. Now I can concentrate on helping Angus. Jane! Hello, Bill. How are you? Oh, just living from day to day, leaning on the Lord for help. I'm glad to hear you haven't lost your faith in the Lord. Oh, I couldn't do that. He's my only source of help and comfort. Bill, I want you to know how much I appreciate what you've done for Angus. I'm glad I could help him. He's still in deep water, though. Jane, we're praying for him. You, too. Yes, I know. We're going to the Monument Company this evening and pick out a headstone for Steve's grave. Huh? Axel Franzen does such nice work. I hope this doesn't set Angus off again. I feel we should since it's been several weeks now. I think your decision is wise, Jane. I'll keep working with Angus, and if there's anything I can do, let me know. You're a wonderful friend, Bill. You never seem to tire of helping people. Goodbye now. Goodbye, Jane. Keep looking up. Hello, Axel. Axel! Well, Bill, uh, how are you? Fine. Yourself? You're not bad at all. <laughs> Say, I can tell by the look on your face that you got something on your mind. You've heard about young Steve McLean. Yes, uh, I was sad. His parents are coming out here this evening to pick out a headstone. Uh, oh, yes. I'll do my very best to help him. Axel, after Steve's funeral, I happened to notice a headstone not too far from his grave. His other grave was for a boy, too. The inscription on the stone is beautiful. Did you do the work? Uh, well, I'm not sure. I did one about a year ago. I'll show you the blueprint. Yeah, here it is. Uh, this the one you were talking about, Bill? Oh, yes. The poem is by Frank Keith. Wonderful piece of work. Yes, it is. Now, listen carefully, Axel. Here's what I want you to do. These are the headstone designs that I've worked up. If you don't care for any of them, I'll be glad to design a new one for you. I don't think that'll be necessary, Mr. Franzen. I like this one. What do you think? Yes, I, I like that one, too. You... Uh... Don't have one made up so we could look at it, do you? Uh, no, but I'd be more than happy to drive you to the cemetery this evening. You can see this particular stone there. I've only made one so far. Oh, that's awfully kind of you. Uh, can we get in to see the stone this late? Oh, sure, I'll make arrangements for that. Do we have to do this tonight, Jane? Can't we wait a couple of weeks? No, Angus, please cooperate. It's not any easier for me than it is for you. I'd like to see the stone, and, and then if we like it, order it and have it made in place. Please, Angus. All right, as you wish. My car is right out in front. This won't take long. Uh, 
Mrs. McLean, if you please. Thank you. Mr. McLean. This way, folks. I'll go ahead with the light. Why? We're only a short distance from Steve's grave. Yes. Uh, here's the identical headstone you like. Oh, I think it's beautiful. Will you read the verse, please, Mr. Franzen? I'm afraid I couldn't make it through. Well, sure, I'll read it. It says, For a little boy... Be tender to him, Lord, because he's so very small, and all of us are now beyond his young and frightened call. Please press him gently to your heart, as we who loved him so once held him gaily, knowing not how swiftly he would go. Be kind to him. We tried to be within our given time. Oh, let him play and shout and, and sing, and let him run and climb. We know that you are near him, God, as he takes ways unknown. And you are love, so where you are, he will not walk alone. And as we age, our cheeks will fade and gray infest our hair. He will always be the same, forever young and fair. Thank you. Angus, look at the boy's name. I noticed it, too. Wesley Morgan, Jr. I wonder if... Yes, Mr. McLean. This is my son's grave. He was killed by a runaway team of horses a year and a half ago. I... <laughs> it's all right, Mr. McLean. I understand. <laughs> Yes, now we all know what Wesley meant when he said he understood. And Angus learned a big lesson in understanding from Wesley. Boys and girls, do you try to understand always, even when you may be hurt and disappointed, and then when others are in need? You know you should. It's the way the Lord wants us to be. Understanding and with love and compassion for those who need help. Well, I'll be back again next week when you'll hear more adventures of... <laughs>